Shavnam Diaries Podcast Hare Krishna, we are continuing to read Bhagavad Gita as it is the book by His Divine Grace Abhay Charanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Chapter 18 The Perfection of Renunciation Text 49 Asakta buddhi sarvatra jitatma vigata spriha Naishkarm yasidhim paramam sanyasenadhi gachati One who is self-controlled and unattached and who disregards all material enjoyment can obtain by practice of renunciation the highest perfect stage of freedom from reaction. Purport. Real renunciation means that one should always think himself part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, and therefore think that he has no right to enjoy the results of his work. Hmm, that's a nice definition. Since he is part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, the results of his work must be enjoyed by the Supreme Lord. This is actually Krishna Consciousness. The person acting in Krishna Consciousness is really a sannyasi, one in the renounced order of life. By such a mentality one is satisfied because he is actually acting for the Supreme. Thus he is not attached to anything material. He becomes accustomed to not taking pleasure in anything beyond the transcendental happiness derived from the service of the Lord. A sannyasi is supposed to be free from the reactions of his past activities. But a person who is in Krishna consciousness automatically attains this perfection without even accepting the so-called order of renunciation. This state of mind is called Yoga Rudha, or the perfectional stage of Yoga. As confirmed in the third chapter, Yastvatmaratirevasyat, one who is satisfied in himself has no fear of any kind of reaction from his activity. Text 50. Siddhim prapto yatha brahma tathap notini bodhame samasenaiva kaunteya nishtha gyanasya yapara. O son of Kunti, learn from me how one who has achieved this perfection can attain to the supreme perfectional stage Brahman, the stage of highest knowledge by acting in the way I shall now summarize. Purport. The Lord describes for Arjuna how one can achieve the highest perfectional stage simply by being, being engaged in his occupational duty, performing that duty for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One attains the supreme stage of Brahman simply by renouncing the result of his work for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. That is the process of self-realization. The actual perfection of knowledge is in attaining pure Krishna consciousness. That is described in the following verses. Text 51-53 Buddhya Vishuddhaya Yukto Drityatmanam Niyam Yacha Shabdadin Vishayam Stiaktva Ragadveshao Vyudasyacha Vivikta Sevila Gvashi Yatava Kaya Manasa Dhyana Yoga Paro Nityam Vairagyam Samupashrita 
Аханкарам балам дарпам камам кродам париграмам Вимуча нирма мах шанто Брамабхуя я калпатей Being purified by his intelligence and controlling the mind with determination giving up the object of sense gratification being freed from attachment and hatred one who lives in a secluded place who eats little who controls his body mind and power of speech who is always in trance and who is detached free from false ego false strength false pride lust anger greed oh i'm sorry there's no greed mentioned it's lust anger greed it's lust anger and acceptance of material things free from false proprietorship and peaceful such a person is certainly elevated to the position of self-realization Poor part. When one is purified by intelligence, he keeps himself in the mode of goodness. Thus, one becomes the controller of the mind and is always in trance. He is not attached to the objects of sense gratification, and he is free from attachment and hatred in his activities. Such a detached person naturally prefers to live in a secluded place. He does not eat more than what he requires. And he controls the activities of his body and mind. He has no false ego, because he does not accept the body as himself, nor has he a desire to make the body fat and strong by accepting so many material things, because he has no bodily concept of life, he is not falsely proud, he is satisfied with everything that is offered to him by the grace of the Lord, and he is never angry in the absence of sense gratification, nor does he endeavor to acquire sense objects. Thus, when he is completely free from false ego, he becomes non-attached to all material things, and that is the stage of self-realization of Brahman. That stage is called the Brahma Bhuta stage. When one is free from the material conception of life, he becomes peaceful and cannot be agitated. This is described in Bhagavad Gita 2.70. Apuryamanam machala pratishtam samudramapa pravishanti yadvat tadvat kama. Yam pravishanti sarve sashantum sashanti mapnoti nakama kami. Quote, a person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled, but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. Text 54 Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Nasho Chati Nakankshati Samah Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhakti Mlabate Param One who is transcendentally situated at once realizes the Supreme Brahman and becomes fully joyful he never laments nor desires to have anything. He is equally disposed toward every living entity. 
In that state, he attains pure devotional service unto me. Purport. To the impersonalist, achieving the Brahma Bhuta stage, becoming one with the Absolute, is the last word. But for the personalist or pure devotee, one has to go still further to become engaged in pure devotional service. This means that one who is engaged in pure devotional service to the Supreme Lord is already in a state of liberation called Brahma Bhuta, oneness with the Absolute. Without being one, one with the Supreme, the Absolute, one cannot render service unto Him. In the Absolute conception there is no difference between the served and the servitor, yet the distinction is there in a higher spiritual sense. In the material concept of life, when one works for sense gratification, there is misery. But in the absolute world, when one is engaged in pure devotional service, there is no misery. The devotee in Krishna consciousness has nothing for which to lament or desire. Since God is full, a living entity who is engaged in God's service, in Krishna consciousness, becomes also full in himself. He's just like a river, a river cleansed of all dirty water. Because a pure devotee has no thought other than Krishna, he's naturally always joyful. Right? Prasannatma, it says, fully joyful. He does not lament for any material loss or aspire for gain because he is full in the service of the Lord. He has no desire for material enjoyment because he knows that every living entity is a fragmental part and parcel of the Supreme Lord and therefore eternally a servant. He does not see in the material world someone as higher and someone as lower. Higher and lower positions are ephemeral. And a devotee has nothing to do with ephemeral appearances or disappearances. I love this one, you know, I just really love this. Hmm. For him, stone and gold are of equal value. This is the Brahma Bhuta stage. And this stage is attained very easily by the pure devotee. In that stage of existence, the idea of becoming one with the Supreme Brahman and annihilating one's individuality becomes hellish. The idea of attaining the heavenly kingdom becomes phantasmagoria, and the senses are like serpents whose poison teeth are broken. As there is no fear of a serpent with broken teeth, there is no fear from the senses when they are automatically controlled. The world is miserable for the materially infected person, but for a devotee the entire world is as good as Vaikuntha, or the spiritual sky. Now, this is an important point. Hmm? Okay. The highest personality in this material universe is no more significant than an ant for a devotee. Such a stage can be achieved by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, who preached pure devotional service in this age. Haribo! Jai. Alright, so today we have established what is Brahma Bhuta stage. And honestly, it's like, it's not the final goal for devotees. 
pure prema bhakti. Krishna prema bhakti, that serving lords, pure devotees in that stage is what we're striving for. But even this position like sounds so wonderful, <laughs> just being a devotee, you know? It's just... And this, this particular sentence is from this verse. I really like this definition that, you know, for the devotee, the entire world is as good as Vaikuntha. And this world is miserable for the materially infected person, right? Recently also we were remembering that you can be happy in the material world either if you're a fool or if you're a Paramahamsa. So either if you're a devotee, you're happy, or if you're a fool, you're happy. Because actually, material world is a miserable place. And just today, I was listening to Shiva Prabhupada's class, who was saying that um, being conscious of your miseries, that's being human. Because if you're not conscious of the fact that you're miserable, if you're going through miseries and you're not even conscious of that, you're not acknowledging that, you're just living the life of an animal. Animal lives and they don't, you know, like... They suffer, but they don't question, why am I suffering? What is this? Why is it, you know? When will it end? How can I stop my suffering? So the first step is to acknowledge the fact that, yes, we do suffer. And then when we actually become devotees, when we get on this platform of devotional service, being one with the Supreme, being on the stage of Brahma Bhuta, we will not experience suffering because we will become devotees. And for devotees, this world is as good as Vaikuntha. And it's important to understand that, you know, you can't fake it. <laughs> you can't pretend that um, you're a devotee. <laughs> In the sense that um, I'm talking for myself that uh, even though, you know, I was, you can say, practicing. I, I am practicing. I was born in a devotee family and practicing my whole life, I understand that I'm not yet on the level of Brahma Bhuta, although there are some glimpses here and there sometimes uh, when we are like like today I went for Kirtan Mela, now it's Kirtan Mela in Mayapur, and for like two hours we were chanting and it was just blissful, it was so wonderful, and devotees were chanting so nicely, and you can feel this, you know, like these glimpses of this stage that, you know, I don't want anything, I don't need anything, I don't lament for anything, I'm so happy, I'm just, you know, serving the Lord, it's just so wonderful, and um, what we are aiming for is to have this 24-7, you know, Kirtaniya uh, Sadahari, that we want to experience this all the time, that's when we are pure devotees, right? So this is where we're going, and it's it's a wonderful place <laughs> where we're going. Yes, yeah, so tomorrow we shall continue the next verse where Krishna will establish the fact that you can only understand him through devotional service. Yeah, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for tuning in today. The book links, previous episodes, timeline, and biography of the author can be found on shravanamdiaries.com. The link is in the description, and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna.